so uh, unlike banking, as you rightly put it, uh, it's not so much of transaction centric. Right? The simple reason being the transactions in terms of going in and go out, going out is not much uh, from the account. Uh, so you, in the insurance, you typically would have proposals being uh, put in and then at the most you might have a partial withdrawal if it's a ULIP <coughs> link product and if it's a non-link even that is not possible and then there are surrender periods uh, beyond which uh, only you could actually withdraw and of course when then you get lapsation or surrenders so other possibility is a cooling period that we have which is 15 day which is called free look period free. so there are of course uh, cases where instances where people actually put in cash because you're allowed up to 50k and then you withdraw in check uh, so uh, as free look so there are instances that so the what we've done is we've brainstormed together and arrived at a set of triggers and alerts and yes the regulator actually had left it to industry to decide sure. so industry decided on 13 minimum yes. triggers or alerts but most many companies or most companies would have gone beyond that right. I guess depending right. on their own risk appetite kind of transactions they have kind of systems they have etc sure. etc so for instance uh, what we have we used to have problem of splitting of cash between branches we had lots of branches and so between branch A and branch B they would split but now uh, because you simply, you have a web token system right. which then it's your central transaction uh, system processing system so the what we've done is of course at the web token level we've restricted it to 50k and then a transaction processing system we have put in alerts to uh, ensure the splitting is caught. right right and uh, after that you uh, go through the transactions uh, you go through the background KYC sometimes you would get fake KYCs so because uh, the it's more uh, if you are a large insurance company it's uh, rural sector or tier 3 tier 4 locations so in those locations again you might get a fake KYC fake age proof etc etc so you would need to then be careful so we have risk assessments <coughs> done branch wise and so the AML risk assessment is again part of the ERM risk assessment kind of we dovetail into each other although it's different yeah. and uh, we look at what kind of branches are negative what or red flag so right. that you pick up those branches and carefully look at the uh, proofs that are attached so then the proofs would be probably fake or questionable because it's again sales centric right. unlike banking uh, sales centricity in the sense that you know everything is sales driven in the insurance industry focuses on new I business think it's focus, <laughs> focuses new business focuses on persistency right. a renewal premium yeah. which is called uh, so given that kind of nature of business you know I've been a banker uh, four or five banks and then, then I joined, uh, went into the insurance industry so there is a lot of difference yes. in the centricity so given that you would have the sales guys pushing these things it's not organization intended right. uh, but it's more a salesman or a sales guy or an agent intended sure. is, so, so is there any kind of say a uh, tool in built into your compliance framework so, like mystery shopping or something where you kind of try to identify yes so we do things. have mystery shopping we also have pre-issuance risk verification call that is done they still game that and then you would have, uh, then I also have now post investigation risk verification because uh, there has been recent changes in the, as you may be aware, yeah. the Insurance Amendment Act came in. So there is something called Section 45, which means that you can't question a fraud after three years. Three years, yeah. So given that, you need to do post, insu post issuance risk verification immediately after the issuance of the policy. So we do that also, based on again risk, <coughs> risk assessments. So we would have negative location, negative sales guy, negative agents, negative occupation, negative product, or negative in the sense, the red ones or the amber ones. And then so you would do more investigation or mystery shopping as you rightly said. Verification of the proofs at the ground level. And then less in the safer zones, uh, the green and uh, the less amber ones. So you, you need to do these kind of variations, risk assessments and uh, investigations to actually harness the systems. Sure. Of course, for STR reporting, we have the InfraSoft and we also use SAS analytics. Okay. Uh, we have a dedupe engine to do data duplication. 
SAS analytics, I think we can use the AML application in SAS analytics simply because you already have customized the transaction processing system. So I don't want to duplicate too many. But the ultimate goal is to move slowly to SAS. Sure. That's the long term horizon and it's going to take time. So we're doing some modeling on the risk side on both post issuance risk verification, risk assessments, and some kind of AML can come fraud risk sure. modeling using our data, powerful data loop page. The data do uh, again, engines might not be for powerful enough. People would play around with names. People would play around with age. People play, age, of course, they can't. Name, of, name is the one they play around with. And so you need to do mother's maiden name and catch in some other way. But again, at, at when you do a check using uh, more powerful engines, you, you can so, catch So that. how big would be your team which is looking at you know the alerts and, and, and So we have a three or four people core team which looks into all these uh, day in and day out. And then we have the risk guys to help them with the other. So, so with this, if